All right, thanks for watching. And today I want to show you about show you the nonatone sequence theorem, which is a theorem at least here at UC Irvine. It's a question that's asked over and over again on the exams. So I thought it's a good time to cover this. And it's actually a really cool theorem because it allows you to show that a sequence converges without even calculating the limit. So it's like without even moving your hand, you can already say it converges or not. And in fact, there's a simple criterion for that. Namely, so here's a theorem. If you have a sequence, so if an is increasing, meaning that the next term is always bigger than the previous term, and it's bounded above, above, meaning there is a universal constant C that does not depend on n such that a n is always smaller than that. So a n is less or equal to C for some C. Again, what's important is the constant does not depend on n, then a n converges. a n converges. So picture-wise is, suppose you have a sequence a n, which goes bigger and bigger and bigger, and there's some ceiling where it never crosses, or this is smaller, less than or equal to that ceiling, then it turns out this ceiling forces the sequence to converge. So there is some L, not necessarily equal to C, where A n converges to L. And the proof is actually very neat. It's one of those analysis cookies, so very sweet treat. So what's the proof of it? And then I'll give you an application. Well, look at this picture. It seems that, well, what is the limit? It's just the biggest value of a n. So in other words, think of l as being the maximum of a n, but the problem is the maximum doesn't always exist. So for example, let's take, for example, just a function arctangent of x. Well, you want to say that its maximum is pi over 2, because as x goes to infinity, arctangent goes to pi over 2. But the problem is, by definition of a maximum, it always has to be attained. There has to be an x where arctangent is pi over 2. And it's not true in this case, but it turns out there's a concept in analysis called the supremum, which remedies that. So, in case you're familiar with supremum, the answer is simply the supremum of a n. So, uh, let L be the supremum over n of a n. And the supremum, just think of it as a maximum value, except it's not necessarily attained. So in the previous example, the supremum of arctangent would be pi over 2. Because it's sort of the biggest value, in the sense that everything is smaller than it, but it's not necessarily attained. So let L to be the supremum of a n. It could happen that the, the, ma the maximum is infinity, but it's not quite true, because the biggest value of a n we know it's for sure less than or equal to c, because all the values of a n are less than or equal to c, and c has to be a finite constant, so c is less than infinity. So if it converges, well, at least the limit is not infinite, and I'm indeed claiming that a n has to converge to l. So claim a n converges to l, what does it mean for a sequence to converge? It just means it gets as close to L as we want, just by letting N to be uh, large enough. So let epsilon, it's like the math revolver, so let epsilon greater than zero be given. 
Again, what do we want to show then? Uh, there exists, show that there is, is some n naught greater than zero such that if n is greater or equal to n naught, then a n minus l is less than epsilon. So it gets as close as we want to, a, to L just by choosing N large enough. And the question is, how can we find N or N naught? We'll see. So, again, let epsilon be given. And notice the following. What happens to L minus epsilon? And remember, L was the biggest value. And we have L minus epsilon. Well, of course, L minus epsilon is strictly less than L. Now let me give you a small analogy. So suppose I tell you there's the biggest grade of the class, that's L, and I'm telling you, you got something smaller than the biggest grade. In other words, what if I told you you didn't get the highest grade of the class? Well, then hopefully, if you're logically sound, you would say, there, might, there must be someone who got a bigger grade than me. And in fact, this is true. If, let's say, your grade is L minus epsilon, what this means is there must be a student, call it AN, whose grade is bigger than L minus epsilon. And in fact, that is the definition of supremum. Namely, whenever you're smaller than it, there must be some value of a n that's bigger than this smaller value that I gave. So, in particular, by the definition of the supremum, so by definition of L as a supremum, what's up, okay? Uh, there must be some value a n Is some, in fact, not only a n, let's call it a n naught, so a n naught, such that a n naught is bigger than that value, so l minus epsilon. And why did I write a n naught? Because in fact, this n naught is the solution to our problem, so it, this is the stuff we wanted to find. And let's see if, in fact, if n is bigger than that, a n minus l is less than epsilon. And for this, let's use one assumption we haven't used yet, namely the fact that n is, a n is increasing. So, because a n is increasing, if n is greater or equal to n naught, a n must be greater or equal to a n naught, and that is greater than L minus epsilon. So what do we have? We conclude that a n is greater than L minus epsilon, but also remember what L was, again this picture here, right? We had L was sort of the maximum of the a n's. So in particular, a n is also less than or equal to L. Okay. And how does that help us? Well, remember we want to show that a n minus L is less than epsilon with an absolute value. So let's just subtract L from both sides. So, what do we have? a n minus L. Well, on the one hand, it's greater than minus epsilon. On the other hand, it's less than or equal to zero. So in fact, well, zero is strictly less than epsilon because epsilon was greater than zero. And so a n minus l is, I guess, squeezed between minus epsilon and epsilon. And if sort of a number is between minus, let's say, minus one and one, then its absolute value is less than 1. So absolute value of a n minus l 
is less than epsilon. And that's exactly what we wanted to show. So, namely, if you choose, there is some n naught which we found by this supremum, such as n is greater or equal to n naught, then a n minus u limit is strictly less than epsilon. And this was very neat, and it used the two facts very crucially. First of all, that it's bounded to assure that you know l is finite. And also, the fact is increasing just to ensure that, in fact, starting with n naught, you can also bound the ans. So, and in fact, if one of those conditions is false, then the whole theorem just breaks down. So, that was like the theory part of it. Now, let me give you a nice application, which was one of the questions asked on the um, to be final last year, and I remember I told my students, don't worry about this question. There's no way it's gonna appear on the exam. And bang, it was the last question on the exam. So uh, take my advice with a grain of salt. So application, suppose you have this sequence, a1 equals to one, and the next term, a n plus one equals to n squared over n squared plus one a n. So it's a recursive sequence which says that the next term depends on the previous term. So for example, a1 is 1, of course. a2, remember 2 is 1 plus 1, so n equals to 1. So a2 is 1 squared over 1 squared plus 1, a1. And that becomes 1 half times 1, and that's 1 half. And let's continue, uh, a3 then becomes, that's n equals to 2, so 2 squared over 2 squared plus 1 times a2, and that becomes 4 fifths times 1 half, and that's 2 fifths. And you just continue. I forgot what the next term is, but you can calculate it. And here's the thing, I have no idea what this limit is. And in fact, I will never figure out what that limit is. But this weird sequence, even though it has this funny behavior, I will show that it converges. So if you do this, you know, like infinitely many times, at some point you have to stagnate to an answer. You claim. A n converges and for this we want to use the monotone sequence theorem but sort of in the opposite way and actually I forgot to mention that note other version So before I said, if a sequence is increasing and bounded above, it converges. Well, the same thing also happens if it's decreasing and bounded below. So if a n is decreasing and a n is greater or equal to some constant, then a n converges. Converges. And, uh, of course, to prove it, just consider minus a n, then it's increasing and bounded above, so it converges by the previous version. But this version now we want to use to prove it. So, let's first of all show that a n uh, is bounded up below. So claim. In fact, I will show this is true for c equals to zero. So we actually claim that a n is greater or equal to zero. This will be our c. And well, for this, you almost see it, huh? you see it. Because look, a1, what is that? It equals to one, and that's greater or equal to zero. 
And now, assuming that a n is greater or equal to 0, so if a n is greater or equal to 0, let's see what happens to the next term. Well, a n plus 1, by definition, that is n squared over n squared plus 1, a n. Look. If this term is positive, at least non-negative, this term, well, it's positive, because it's a quotient of two positive terms, so the whole thing will be non-negative. So, if a n is non-negative, then a n plus 1 will be non-negative. And so, if you think about it, what have we shown? If a1 is greater or equal to 0, then the next term, a2, is greater or equal to 0, then the next term, a3, is greater or equal to 0, etc., etc. So everything will be greater or equal to 0. It's a calculus argument, but if you want to be super rigorous, you would have to use an induction proof. But I just want to say that you know, this is you know, legit. So in fact, a n is greater or equal to 0, and that was the first claim, and now I guess the second claim. So that was claim 1, and the second claim is, let's just show that a n is decreasing. And for this, just notice, a n plus 1 equals to n squared over n squared plus 1 a n. What do you know about this fraction? The numerator is strictly smaller than the denominator. So um, this thing then just becomes strictly less than 1. And this term is greater or equal to 0. So a n plus 1 is less than or equal to a n. So it's strictly uh, less than a n if the term is positive. Well, that's actually all we need, so a n plus 1 is less than or equal to a n. So the sequence is decreasing, or at least non-increasing, and I think uh, it's completely fine for a proof. So we have our um, a sequence that's decreasing and that's greater or equal, that's bounded below, and therefore the whole sequence converges by the monotone sequence theorem. So by the monotone sequence theorem, A n converges. And again, it's very neat because without even showing that the uh, sequence, without even calculating the limit, I showed that the sequence converges. So it's neat. And in fact, I don't know what the limit is. It would be an interesting exercise to figure out what it is. But again, it's maybe up to you. So, uh, all right, so if you like this calculus extravaganza and you want to see more math, please make sure to subscribe to my channel. Thank you very much.